This is our evidence. Somebody got a Nobel Prize for showing this evidence and saying that the earth is warming. Now the present science shows we are going into an ice age, second ice age. Become cooler, a lot cooler. Now only evidence for the earth being warm is the underwear of ladies. 18th century, it was very big. Now it is hardly seen. This is called surrogate evidence. That is exactly what we are doing in research. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of papers. There was a professor of physiology and cardiology in Stanford. His name is John Ioannidis. John was a very peculiar chap. He, he is a wizard in mathematics. So he went to investigate published papers in six leading journals. Not ordinary journals. Not Japi Gipi and all. The top journals. And do you know what he came up with? 85% of what is written there is not worth even reading second time. Of course, it's not correct. And he came to the conclusion that almost 95% of what we doctors do is not based on science. So much so, what has happened next, you see. Today, a patient is running away from the hospital. Have you seen this? This from the Time magazine. Patient is running away because as soon as he went into the hospital and said chest, before he said pain, six surgeons were ready with knife to do a bypass surgery. So he said, the only way is, if you want to survive, you simply say no and run away in the, the hospital gown itself. And you see all these corporate hospital fellows, from the superintendent to the nurse, are running after him. Because if you don't have a patient, I always tell my students, a doctor can never survive without patients. But a patient can survive without doctors. Probably better. So that's what has happened now. This has come to that. Because see, this is what's happening. You go to the hospital. One week ago, I saw a patient in Chennai. Very interesting chap. He had some little difficulty in breathing at night. Everybody gets frightened because you see now what is called a medical scare system. Every five minutes in the television, you see the heart doing that and some oil. It said, heart healthy oil, go for a checkup tomorrow. This is the biggest fraud on, on mankind. And with this, everybody gets frightened. So this fellow went to the hospital. Immediately, they took an ECG. Incidentally, the ECG was normal. But they told him, you had a heart cardiac arrest. You had a cardiac arrest. This man is walking to the hospital. Then they said, where are your relatives and all? Because get all of them. Because something serious is happening. So got all the relatives, looked at them. How well they are. Where is their bank balance? First they asked him whether you have insurance, whether you are a government servant, whether you are, you know, in the corporate sector. When they said, nothing, get your relatives. And he saw one relative was very ill. Then he said, immediately he must have an angiogram. And then an angioplasty. He may not even go home alive. He went home walking. So this is what is happening to our hospital. We, do we have a science of man as of now? Have you heard of this Nobel laureate who taught surgeons how to stitch vessels? His name is Alexis Carroll. Have you heard of him? He has written a book called Man the Unknown. One sentence there is worth reading. He says, there is no science of man today. Full stop. And I have been saying this for 50 years now. Modern medicine needs a new science. Modern medicine needs a new scientific model. Now, what are we doing all this time? What have we been doing? RCTs and peer review. What is RCT? Randomized control trial. What are you controlling? Two groups of human beings. Now, these two human beings are not alike at all. They are not molecules in the laboratory to be compared. They are two different human beings. They are two different consciousness. Two different minds. And I will tell you eventually, you are a mind. You are not the body. Body is an illusion. In quantum physics, body is an illusion. So how can you compare two comparatively disparate groups and say, I have compared the two. This group is better than this group. So this treatment is better than that treatment. That's why every treatment now kills more people than it saves. Next one is, this is a, this is a real bait. What's called? Peer review. Ah, what a beautiful thing. What is peer review? Do you know what peer review is? Yes? He is own friend. Good, good. He is very good, very good. Peer review is a Western scientific trick to see that knowledge does not go forwards. 
Oh, you didn't know that. Karl eh? Popper. Have you heard of Karl Popper? Good. Karl Popper is a physicist. And he was the professor of science philosophy in the London School of Economics in the 50s as a philosopher. He had written so many books. One book he writes, knowledge advances not by repeating known facts, but by refuting false dogmas. Did you understand that? Now, what does the peer review say? Supposing I say there is no science or man and I publish a paper. Peer reviewer says, this is nonsense. Don't, have, don't publish it. So, only known things can be published. That's called peer-reviewed journal. Actually, RCT and peer review are supposed to be the highest things, no? Only the other day, the president of NICE, you know NICE, National Institute of Clinical Excellence, this is the highest body of science in the UK. Sir Michael Rollins was giving an oration at the Royal College. He said, I quote, RCTs and peer review have been put on a very high, undeserving pedestal. That's why science is not progressing. Can you believe that? I was giving a talk in the Indian Institute of Science 10 years ago when Abdul Kalam wanted me to give a keynote address in the Science Congress. I told him, I'm not, I'm not accepted as a scientist by your scientist groups. He said, don't worry, I'll, I'll tell them. And when I was talking, they thought I'm talking, you know, through the hat, through my hat. Now they write to me, yes, what did you say that time? I want that reference, I want this reference. Ten years later. This is the bane of our science, anyway. Now the last thing that we are killing patients in our physiology is one size fits all. That is what's called normal blood pressure. What is that, normal blood pressure? Your physiologist. I don't know. Gandhiji's blood pressure was 200 by 120 all his life. And who was losing sleep? Sushila Nair. Old man was sleeping nicely. And Gandhiji died of a very important complication of high blood pressure. Bullet. <laughs> his kidneys were all right. His brain was all right. His heart was all right. His, his vessels were all right. Because his mind was all right. He didn't hate nobody. It is if you hate somebody only you get disease. Did you know that? Hostility is the most important risk factor of heart attack and cancer. Anger is the cause of cerebral hemorrhage. Not eating cholesterol. Actually, cholesterol more the barrier. The more you have, the longer you live because you have very strong wall in the cell. So the